are duads, dual terms, dual terms, sets of dual terms. Contrasting, opposites, contrasting. Next step. Is it possible that with the distinctions made in one, two, and three, These are foundation statements without which the entire proposition could not be developed. So, look, there are, according to some people, apart from the intro, there are nine ideas being explored. Now, suppose these ideas, presuppose these, and suppose it's built this way. Let's call these the foundation ideas. And, well, actually, we could actually do it the other way. And from this, other things can be built from it. That means that what's ever here can be then be used in the next, and the next, and the next. Would that be interesting? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That the whole thing then depends upon this structure. Being and being has the property of oneness. This is one. It's not nothing. It has the property of being. Therefore, this taken together is a whole. But it's a whole of of the whole that is. Now, when you agree, these are two parts, being and one. By the way, it has the property of oneness, therefore this is another part of being. This is a, a part, and equally well, this is another part of one, a distinction. Every distinction you can call it a part. And by the way, that means what we've generated is a pair. A pair on this side.
these two are primary pairs. Oh, by the way, uh, this is a part. Oh, any part, any part must be uh, Uh, must have a oneness. And uh, if a oneness, it must exist. So it too has been. So, uh, So, <laughs> this part, oh, by the way, uh, this is a part, and therefore it too must have, and this is a part, no end. Therefore the whole thing is generation of, of duads, the duads. All the way through. From the point of view of the nine ideas, the duads, Pardon? the duads are, are unrelated to nine. You can do it again. Duads are unrelated to nine in any way because they cannot be divided into <coughs> nine. They cannot be multiplied. I wouldn't nine. do it. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. That that's independent of nine ideas. <laughs> Each of the nine ideas is going to be a duad. But I'm just right. saying, like, duets like, don't have a relationship to time. I agree with you. Okay. Yeah. Right. If we were to take any one of these, then we should then be able to see that it has the structure. If so, then it makes sense. What do you do with it? <laughs> That's another ball game. Sorry, if you if you take any one of them, it should be. You said it. If you take any one of them, we should be able to show it has this structure. And what what is the structure? This duadic structure? Well, it'll, dual every structure? one. Yeah, I just took this. Uh huh. But whatever whatever one you take is going to have a duad structure. Going back to playing out this language. You see, this is the language. But one whole parts. Hmm. So like you can talk about you can talk about the whole having certain properties, then you can shift and talk about whether the one has the same properties. <laughs> And you're going to come up with different results and different conclusions. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? I'm saying whatever analysis is made, you have to pick up whether he's starting with this, this, or this. And the play between these three ideas, he's then going to contrast with Nine ideas which can be set up in a series of duads. Mm. Same, other, rest, motion, any of them. There will gotcha. always be pairs. Nine pairs. Or there can be there can be pairs, three sets of pairs, that will then be reduced to a pair. Mm. Uh, Each of these is a pair. Yet each is a dual. Each is a dual. 
which is dualism. Two things. That means dual, right? Mm -hmm. Two, two, two. Mm -hmm. So you have three pairs. Mm -hmm. well, you're saying, hey, you know what's curious about them? Um, you can then you can then contrast them, can you? Compare them. Well, you're going to get different results when you do so. But what's he doing? He's setting up pairs and then talking about them within this language, one, two, or three. Now look here. Either that's useful or it isn't. But the important thing, though, is, is that the assumption I'm raising is that the whole thing is ways of talking about sets of pairs. So like we can say, ah, the heck with it. Let's take one of the ideas and see. Now, here's the problem. These are the introductions. Introductions. Right. Now we can go up and talk about the ideas that he sets out. The higher you go, the more it's going to include the priors. But that won't stop us. So you either can take the first set, second, third, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. The last one, of course, is easier as hell. But So I've got to get my books. Somewhere. Right here. Here. I'd like to somewhere. Right. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Good job. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, and he's going to have principles. He's going to also develop principles which you're going to then see how he applies them. Um, oh, and by the way, the pair, the pair that he's going to set up for you as a conclusion is always contradictory. Mm. Like, would you agree that, um, watch, this is difficult. Can the same thing be in rest and motion? At the same time, with respect yeah. to the same part of itself? Yeah. No. He's going to say yes. <sighs> hey, can the same, can the thing that's uh, the same as something be other than it, other than it, than itself? Mm. Not the same. That's going to be a conclusion. Mm. All the conclusions are going to contain, mm. as you look at it, contradictions. Contradictions. Mm. Therefore, the whole thing is going to end up being a set of contradictions. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Yeah, there has to be. Here. Um. Here. With the. Here. I've the. Um. This being the case, will not the one be in itself and in other? Will it be in itself and other in other? Hmm. Depending upon how you use this analysis, <coughs> you can say it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I'm on 145C. And all we need is a... Would you go along with me? And all we're going to do is point to this cookie. We're not going to do anything else. How is that? Each of the parts, doubtless, is in the whole. Yes or no? Sure, yes. Sure. And none is outside the whole. <coughs> Obvious, right? Obvious. Yeah. And all the parts are included in the whole. Yes. And surely the one is all its parts. What did he just do? He moved to this, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. The one is all its parts, neither more nor less than all. I have to be careful about that because in one way, no, that's not true. The parts are part of a whole, not the one. The one is a one. See, there are two levels. So let's watch what he does with it. But the whole is the one, is it not? Hey, the whole is the one, is it not? Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This particular one that is. <laughs> the one that is? Mm -hmm. This is the one that is. You can talk about it. Hey, the, 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 the one that is, it's just one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's also a whole, is it not? Yeah. See, yeah. now I dropped a level, didn't I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's parts. So, this language he's going to use now shifting between these two words and the idea of parts. Watch what he does on But the whole is one, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, in one way. Mm -hmm. And if all the parts are in the whole, are they not? He dropped back down to whole in parts. Mm -hmm. And all the parts are the one. Are all the parts the one? You jump back here, mm -hmm. right? He's moving between mm -hmm. these two ideas. Mm -hmm. Then all the parts are in the whole, and all the parts are the one, and the one is also the whole, is it not? And the one is also the whole. And all the parts are included in the whole, Right? All the parts will be included in the whole. <coughs> Thus the one will be in itself. Hmm. See how we did it? Mm -hmm. And the one will be in itself. Ah! Mm -hmm. Strictly speaking, well, look how he did it, by moving back and forth in this language. Now we're going to go for its opposite. But the whole is not in the parts. Hey, <coughs> the whole, as the whole, it can't be in one of these, can it? No. In the part? No. I mean, if the whole whole is in a part, that part's going to be pretty big. <laughs> and the other part is going to be smaller, isn't it? Because yeah. the whole is in the part. See what he was doing? Yeah. He's now talking about what would happen if you take this idea of whole and talk about it in terms of 
The party can do that in two ways. Talk about that or that. They're both parts, are they not? Yes or no? Yeah. Or you can do the same thing on this side. Mm -hmm. Those are all parts. But the whole is not in the parts, neither in all of them, nor in any. Of course the whole isn't in any of the parts, either part of it or any of it or any of it. Right? The whole is the whole. can't be in the parts. For if it is in all, it must be in one. Mm -hmm. Right, take the opposite. Okay, the whole is in a part. <laughs> Uh-oh. For if it is in all, it must be in one. For it were in any one, it would no longer be in all. Yeah, that's true, but it has to be in all. For if this one is one of all, and the whole is not in this one, how can it still be in all? It cannot be in any way. Nor can it be in some of the parts. For if the whole were in some parts, well, it would be greater <laughs> than the less, which is impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. Look, see what he's doing? He's saying, look, here. we can talk about the whole. How can the whole be in a part? Well, the whole is the sum of the parts. Yeah. Can't be in a part, can it? That's absurd. <laughs> or in any, this is a part, this is a part, this is a part, the big thing is a part. Or we can go on and push it more and more. So you get a bunch of absurdities, don't you? Watch this conclusion. But not being in one, the whole is not being in one, or in several, or in all the parts. Well, it's got to be in something else, right? <laughs> it's got to be in something else if it ain't in any of those. Or otherwise it will cease being anywhere. <laughs> if it were in nowhere, it would be nothing. But being a whole, since it is not in itself, it must be in something else. You know what that's going to be? In others. So the one will be in itself and in other. <clears throat> Conclusion. What? Hey. In itself, in other. A pair. A pair. See that pair? Now he's going to use it in the next argument. He's building up a vocabulary with each one of these ideas and pulling them into the next and the next and the next and the next. And you're always going to end up in pairs that are opposites. And how is he going to do it? By pulling this scheme. Now he has a couple of extra words to use in the scheme. He's building up a vocabulary. Watch. <clears throat> Where are we going next? Motion and rest. Opposites? Yes or no? Yes. Suppose he can show that the one we're talking about is both. Contradiction. Mm -hmm. Contradiction. But he'll be able to show it with the logic that follows. See, look here. If you're seeing that there is a way of talking this way, and plenty of this seems, it seems, it seems, it seems, all through this, then we can kick back and say, now that we did this, what the heck does it refer to? But he doesn't tell us, so. Hmm. But can we see how he moves from hmm. mo that it's going to be both motion and rest? Let's try it. Notice, this being its nature, everything we've said, 
Must not the one... Hey, picking up from here, isn't he? Must not the one be in rest and motion? Well, the one rest in motion. Well, let's see what he does. All right, all right, all right. How's that? You know what? If it's in itself, right? If it's at rest, no doubt, it's in itself. See, he's picking up in itself, is he not? He's saying, I can take this idea of in itself with what we have, and I can show you how it's at rest. That's where he's going. In other motion. How's that? Hey, it's at rest, no doubt, if it's in itself. For a being in one, for a being in one, and not passing out from this, being in itself, not passing out of it. You know what it is? It's in the same. Oh, if it's in itself, then it's in, picking up the word same, then it's in the same. Ah, oh, that's weird. Namely, it's going to be in itself. But that which is always in the same must always be at rest. And you know what? That's not very convincing until you see that he takes the other side and it seems to make more sense when we deal with otherness. <clears throat> you see how he does it? If it's in itself, doesn't change, must be in the same, anything that stays in the same must be at rest. If it's always in the same, well, then it never moves. Therefore, it must be at rest. Well then, must not, on the contrary, that which is always in other, be never in the same. Ah, it's always in other. See, he's picking up in other, he's adding to it one word. Always. If it's always in other, hey, if it's always in other, And never in the same. Well, it can't be at rest. And not being at rest, it's in motion. Hmm. Hmm. So now we have more terms. We're going to keep going. See? It's going to take these. It's going to push them to the next level. Yeah, but One. now he's going to move into two sets of duets, or two Why must something that is uh, always in other be in motion? Well, it's always in something other than itself. Couldn't it just be at rest? No, then it would stay where it is. It wouldn't always be going into something else. Flicker, would you agree if motion is to go through a set of points, a line. then thing in motion can never be at rest at any one point. Therefore, it's always going into something else. Mm -hmm. So he concludes.
his conclusion, therefore, is it must be in both rest and motion. Now he's going to turn out four possibilities, and you're going to have to follow one, two, three, four, which one he starts talking about. You have to keep that in mind. He's going to use this vocabulary. That's the way he's going to play the game through the whole thing. Would you agree we're at 146 speed? That's quite difficult. See, it must be same, good old, same with itself. What's he doing? Combining the two prior. He's picking up with itself. And same. And same. He's pulling the two ideas together. So, and other than itself, then he's going to take this one and bring it down here, and this one down here. And likewise, the same with all other things. Same with itself, same with all other things. And other than they. So he's playing with same and other on two levels. Same with itself, same with all other things, other than itself, other than they. I should turn these two around, by the way, but I don't. Now he's going to give you a couple of principles he needs in order to settle that it's all of these. But if it's all of these, like the one prior, is that an impossibility or it's possible? Like, is it any possibility is it or an is it possible? Is it is the if it's all of those, then it reaches an impossibility. Like, can you have all? It's of the those? same thing as this. Can you have both of those together? Same that's, thing. That's what. That's right. It, because can we, you have both of these together? No. For the same thing. Is he saying it? Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. Same listen. thing he's going to do here. So he's saying something that's not possible. So what do you want me to do? <laughs> well, then what are we going through this exercise for? Why should I possible? tell you? You want to know who killed the butler? Yeah. No. Okay. You're following. You're saying, I find this curious. Ask me if I find it curious. Do you find it curious? No. Okay. Do you want to know who killed the butler? Yeah, do you see where it? <laughs> no, no. Do you see, though, it has a logic to it? It does have that. Right? And it all depends upon sets of twos, 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 twos. Right? Now he's going to give you a principle. This principle is really interesting. Okay. Everything's everything. What? Okay, good. She dropped it. Everything, see, everything stands to everything. And one of the following relations, it's either the same or other. What's he doing? Picking up the same terms, the same and other. Or neither of those two and relation of part to whole or whole to part. Hey, would you agree everything in the universe stands to everything else in the universe as either being the same or different? 
This is the curious one. Or part to hold or hold to part. Hmm. So what that means is wow. yeah. you either can talk about, you can make conclusions about the parts and then to the whole, or the whole and go backwards. And at this point, you should say, I don't see that it makes a darn bit of difference. Yeah. Now he's got to show you it does. I'm just going to start with other. Watch. Now, is the. Uh, I think I skipped. Uh, no, no. Now, is the one a part of itself? What's he doing? Notice. It's going from one to three, is he not? Is the one a part of itself? It can't be. Why? A part is part of a whole. Now, is the one a part of itself? By no means. Then it cannot, by being a part in relation to itself, be a whole in relation to itself, as a part of itself. No, that's impossible. Look here. As you read through this, you have to see that it follows, and then go back and say, did we just deal with these four ideas he set out? What is it? He's going to go through a development of thought that you're going to follow, but you have to go back and make sure he's talking about these. And if you don't, You'll come to a conclusion you don't know what he did. That's, his, that's the way he proceeds. That's the way he proceeds. The trouble is, you see, he doesn't do it the way we might. One, two, three, four, and then explore them. One, two, three, four. He'll go three, four, two, one. So I give you a little bit of mix up, as it were. What are we saying, right, at this point? We're just making a couple of points. We're saying there's a curious order to it. Each step seems to be okay. We can see how he's doing it. It seems very strange to come to some conclusions the way in which he's proceeding. Well, sure seems that you can come to these conclusions. What does it refer to? He doesn't tell you. Mind is just doing it. What might be remarkable is that it does fit something. But he's just proceeding with this model. Now, um, Of course, this is the fifth. Uh, you could take the sixth or seventh or eighth, skip and just see that he's doing the same thing wherever he goes. Right? Jump to six or eight, anyone you want. Uh, six is at 147C. He's going to take what pair? Like and unlike. Hey, is it possible he's going to end up by saying the same thing as both like and unlike? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. What do you have to do? You have to see what kind of reasoning leads him to that. 
you'll see there are a couple of curious steps, and that's it's going. You're going to say, "Well, you maybe you could say that it seems so," and that's the mark of this hypothesis. All right? Just try it from. Say we jump to to six. Uh, 147C. Is it then also like and unlike itself and others? Two pairs. Like and unlike itself and others. At any rate, now he's going to reason, at any rate, since it was found to be other than others, see what he's doing? You have to go back and make sure you see how he came to that conclusion because he's carrying it forward, isn't he? If you did that, that's at 147C. Actually, it isn't. It's a wrong number. Uh, ah, wrong number. I think it's 146. Yeah, okay. Shall we try it? Good idea. Is it then also like and unlike itself and others. Is it then also like and unlike itself and others? Uh, maybe, perhaps, or likely. At any rate, since it was found to be other than others, the others must also be other than it. What does that mean? What we're saying before, you can see evidence of. A prior conclusion about others being others, he now uses in this sequence. Mm -hmm. What then? Then it is other than the others, just as the others are other than it? Neither more or less? Certainly. Oh, what indeed should it be? And if, and if neither more nor less than in like degrees? Yes. Yeah. In so far it is so affected as to be other than the others, and the others are affected in the same way in relation to the one, to that the degree the one will be affected in the same way as the others, and the others in the same way as the one. How do you mean? Now he's going to have to explain it. That's the statement. The logic he's going to use, he's built up from the, the others and he's bringing them down forward. I just want to show you one thing. Uh, before I do anything more. Does this make any sense? Does this help any? Mm -hmm. Then would you agree about one thing? He's going to be setting up 
contrasting terms, like, unlike, rest, motion, same, other, and then end up asserting about the same thing that it's both, mm -hmm. and that baffles us, but he has reasons for saying it. Mm -hmm. He's going to do that through the whole thing. How do you, by playing back and forth? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then picking up these, these other vocabulary, same, other, like itself, unlike itself, same as others, others are like, unlike itself. That is what's, what's really doing. And in so doing, each of these hypotheses, if you, as you said before, by doing this represents can represent different religions or I don't know something. I don't know. But something. So the. I could be interested to see Christianity and, and, and how those ideas and the way he's arguing them. You heard that, or do you want to show it? No, I'd like to see it. I've mm -hmm. only heard it. You mean you'd like to see it done? Uh -huh. They didn't ask. So therefore, I can ignore what you're saying. What well, can you show? No. Okay. That's my religion. <laughs> what well, can you show Christianity? Like, see, religion? see, Proclus is going to say that this represents Kronos. That's what Proclus is going to do. Because is that what this all represents? Kronos. What do you mean? That certain hypothesis or the whole well, set of arguments? When Zeus is said to be a creator, he focuses his mind on an I the idea, the demiurgo. Uh, pardon me, the paradigm. That's the paradigm. The paradigm, the pure idea, is chronos. Pure idea. It is both in itself and in another. All of the qualities he's going to assign to the second hypothesis, he can say, you know what? I can show you how this fits into Greek mythology. That's what he's going to do. So, um, see, this idea is what is called the whole of all perfect wholes. Of all that is, was, will be. So if there are intelligent beings there's just one pure idea of an intelligent being and it may manifest itself because when Zeus then creates the cosmos right, then the cosmos is nothing other than working out the implications of this idea throughout all time and space. So all the possible intelligible creatures, whatever form and nature they might be, he would say, work themselves out in creation throughout the universe, throughout all time. But the idea, the pure idea of all of this, 
There it is. Full intelligent damage. Right? It's a hole, a perfect hole. He said, there are other perfect holes. Eternity includes all time. He has a whole bunch of these most perfect ideas. They're holes. But they're perfect holes. Together, this is a hole of perfect holes. So he has three kinds of holes. See? This. And he says, oh, by the way, um, man, taken as a whole, archetype man, that's a whole. Different kind of whole, because this is a particular manifestation of intelligence in a man. Another might be in porpoises or other beings somewhere else. Oh, by the way, each particular man is a whole. Are they different kinds of holes? So therefore, he's going to talk about holes in these three different ways. And you have to keep in mind which one he's talking about. So he's building this huge edifice, or the second hypothesis. And Proclus says, hey, you know what this fits? This fits the uh, Olympian gods and uh, primary gods. <clears throat> Anyhow, enough said. That's in your theology. That's in Proclus's theology. Yeah. 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 The seven. Yeah. Now, if you have the Thomas Taylor uh, Prometheus Trust version, he has included all of these sections in the translation here. Or you can look it up yourself in you know, the theology of Plato. Hmm. So, through this, he has footnotes, and then you jump to the back, and you see he has pages and pages of footnotes for each one. But what's he trying to create for this? This model, with Hera and all the other gods he needs. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's going to be. But in essence, they're principles and not anthropomorphic images. Well, he's going to lay out the principles in such a way that you can then say, I wonder what Greek god could exhibit all of those qualities so I could say these principles can be personified by that god. Then he has a theology. What's amazing, though, is that with it, the many of the interrelationships these gods have also make sense in terms of this metaphysics, which is more astonishing. Because Zeus is the son of Kronos. Yeah, see, you could personify this mm -hmm. in one way. Mm -hmm. But does it follow that the stories about Zeus and Kronos could also make sense in terms of what we structured out? That's even more remarkable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then this hypothesis would be a way of presenting metaphysically the necessity of certain conclusions, starting with sets of pairs and talking about their relationships in such a way that you can then substitute in the end the very things you need to make intellectual sense of the Greek gods. 
Or only those gods that fit the structure. So, big question for you, okay? Um, how much of this do you want to see? This is where we're going. Okay. Want to spend our time going through the rest of the second hypothesis? This is what you have to do. Yeah. But it means you're going to have to carry, remember, keep the conclusions, always keep in mind the questions that proceed, that proceeds from it, the principles he has manifested in the work or stated clearly, and keep this model, that's what he's doing, and you'll see it fits. And in some points, it's only going to appear that way. Because some of the steps are a little hard pressed, but he does it. So, what do you want to do? We keep going, right? Or? Yes. yes. I want to see the hard pressed appear. You want to see what, what, what? Those ones that you mentioned that are hard, hard that appear that are. You want to see what? I got to make those sure. Those that appear, like you were mentioning just now. Appears. The the ones that you said were hard pressed or they appear. Well, we already did a couple. Oh, we did. Okay. Give me one. Well, to pick up any. Something's in rest and motion at the same time? Is that? Uh, 145. Then the existent one, which is Usia, which is on page 145 in the load. Then the, then the Usia one is apparently both one and many. Whole in parts. Limited and infinite number. So it appears. But I think another way of looking at it is this one. Then if limited, it also it has also extremes. Do you want to say that? If it's limited, it must have extremes? Might the idea of limited not include extremes? No. Well, you know, the word for limit is going to be the word for boundary, I yeah. think. And if it's a whole, will it not have a beginning, middle, and end? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Or can there be any whole without these three? Well, then the one appears, then the one appears, and so he makes his point. Hmm. Hmm. Apparently being of such nature. Hmm. It's right. I mean, it's a, it's a stretching a little bit of what we would call a conventional logic. Like just because it's something limited, does that mean it has that beginning and middle end? I don't know. It says, oh yeah. Hmm. Well, it's limited, now he takes it spatially. Right. He takes it out of the area where we might challenge it, but says, but wait a minute, if you take it spatially, certainly it must have extremes. Yeah, well, that was extremes, it must be a middle. Oh, yeah, that's it. <coughs> I see. Hmm. If you take it spatially. Mm -hmm. Or in the world of becoming, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, and the other ways in which you do not, he leaves out. Mm. So he's building a case. Think in this way, it will fit under these conditions. Hmm. Okay, I've had it. Okay, okay uh, I have an announcement. Um, I'm the treasurer now. So and I'm she's going to offer beer in the evening. Collecting money. Beer. How much are the dues?